Hi, everyone. Welcome to Simply Explained English, the podcast where we break down English language and grammar into easy to understand pieces. I am Lisa. And I am Eric. Whether you're learning English as a second language or just brushing up on your grammar, we're here to simplify everything for you. Let's dive into today's topic and make English simple. What are the words today, Eric? The first word today is generous. Then we will continue with odd. And run out of something. Then miss the boat. And the final one is keep track of something. They seem very useful words, Eric. Yes, Lisa. They are very common in spoken English. Okay, then let's start with the first word, Eric. The first word is generous. 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 Generous describes someone who is happy to give more of something, like money, time, or effort than is usual or expected. It's often connected with kindness and a willingness to help others. Additionally, it is an adjective and generosity is its noun form. Absolutely, Lisa. There are lots of different ways to show that you are generous when you give things. Let's review some examples to explain better. Here's a simple one. My grandmother is very generous. She always cooks extra food for visitors. Another example is, Paul was generous with his time, helping us understand our homework. These examples show that being generous can be anything, from sharing food to spending time helping others. Yes, and it's worth noting that generous is an adjective. It sometimes comes before the noun to describe it. For instance, generous person, generous help, or generous donation, or without a noun, he is very generous. Let's use generous in a dialogue. This time our characters are Sarah and Linda, two friends at a cafe. Linda, you always tip so generously. That's really nice of you. Oh, I think it's important to be generous to service staff. They work hard, and a little extra can help them a lot. You're right. It's a generous act that can make someone's day better. I should start doing that too. This dialogue shows how simple acts of generosity can influence others. Lisa, what do you think about Linda's actions? I think it's wonderful. Being generous, like Linda, helps others and sets a positive example. Eric, can you remember when someone's generosity impacted you? Definitely. Once. A stranger paid for my coffee when I was short on cash. It wasn't much, but it was very generous and made my day. That's a beautiful gesture. It shows that being generous even a little can have a big impact. How do you try to be generous in your daily life, Eric? I try to be generous with my knowledge, especially when helping young colleagues at work. What about you, Lisa? I like to be generous with my time and volunteer when I can. It feels good to give back. It's clear that being generous is about more than just giving money. It's about making a difference in whatever way we can. Exactly. We hope today's first word you to be a little more generous daily. And don't forget to be kind and generous. Thank you for these kind words, Lisa. Let's move on to our next word. The next word is odd. 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 Odd is an adjective. It means something that is not usual or common. It can also mean something that is strange. It is easy to remember because odd things are often strange. That's right, Lisa. We can give two examples. Here's the first one. She has an odd way of laughing that always makes us smile. This means her way of laughing is unusual, but memorable and pleasant. Here's another one. Seeing the town so quiet on a Monday morning is really odd. This means it's unusual because towns are typically busy on Monday mornings. Let's also note that odd can be used with numbers. When we talk about numbers, odd means numbers like 1, 3, 5, and so on. They are not exactly divisible by 2. That's a useful tip, Eric. Now let's move on to our sample dialogue. Imagine two friends, Tom and Sarah, are at a flea market. Look at this old clock, Sarah. It's quite odd, isn't it? Yes, it has an odd shape. I've never seen one like this before. Where did you find it? Over there, 
by that odd-looking stall with all the vintage signs. It's so different and interesting. Hmm, maybe I should look for something odd and interesting to buy as well. What a great use of our word. Tom and Sarah found something odd and interesting. Lisa, what do you think about finding odd things at a market? I think it's exciting, Eric. Odd items can be unique treasures. Have you ever bought something odd, Eric? Yes, once I bought an odd-shaped lamp that turned out to be a conversation starter at my house. Everyone started to talk about the lamp. It sounds like odd things can add some fun and personality to our lives. Definitely, Lisa. It's always interesting to see that strange things can unexpectedly fit into our daily lives. Remember, something odd can be strange, but also wonderful. Keep your eyes open for odd things around you. And that's all about the word odd for today. Okay, the next word is run out of something. Run out of something? Run out of something. Great choice, Eric. When we say we run out of something, it means we have used all of it and there is no more. We often use this phrase in daily conversation. It's particularly useful when you're talking about things you need to buy or replace. Now let's look at some examples. The first example is, I ran out of sugar, so I can't make a cake until I go to the store. And the second one is, we're running out of time to finish this project. We need to hurry. Notice that it's important to know that run out of is a phrasal verb, and it's always used with a noun. You can't use it alone. Let's see this phrasal verb in action. In our dialogue, Tom and Jerry are at a camping site. I think we've run out of water. Did you bring extra bottles? No, I thought you brought them. We really ran out of luck this time, didn't we? Yeah, let's check with our camp neighbors and see if they have some to spare. That was a good use of run out of in a practical situation. Now, what do you think about that scenario, Lisa? It's interesting because it shows how important it is to plan ahead. Running out of water during camping can be a big problem. Absolutely. It's all about being prepared. Have you ever run out of something important unexpectedly, Lisa? Yes, once. I ran out of gas on a lonely road. It was a bit scary, but a kind person helped me out. What about you, Eric? I've run out of battery on my phone at crucial times, which makes me think about carrying a power bank more often. Those are both situations where run out of something affected our day. Definitely, Lisa. It shows how this phrasal verb can be used in many different life situations. True, and that's all for run out of something. Remember to keep stocked up on your essentials and plan ahead to avoid running out. Okay, let's move on to our next word, Eric. The next word is miss the boat. Miss the boat. Miss the boat. Oh, that's an interesting phrase. It means losing an opportunity or taking advantage of something too late. It's often used when someone doesn't do something quickly enough. And it doesn't have to do with actual boats, does it? Exactly, Lisa. It's just a figure of speech. Let's give some examples. Here's the first one. I wanted to buy tickets for the concert, but I waited too long and missed the boat. And here's the second. If you don't apply for the job by tomorrow, you'll miss the boat. Great examples, Lisa. Now, let's go to our sample dialogue. Imagine two friends, Tom and Mia, in a cafe. Mia, did you hear about the art competition? The winner's art will be shown in the city hall. Really? I'd love to enter. When's the deadline? It was yesterday. We've missed the boat on this one. Oh no, that was such a good opportunity. I always miss the boat on things like this. That's a good dialogue showing how someone can miss the boat for an opportunity. Yes, it shows. It might be important to act quickly sometimes. Eric, have you ever missed the boat on something important? Unfortunately, yes. I once had a chance to go on a trip with friends, but I waited too long to decide, and then it was too late. That has happened to me as well. I've missed opportunities because I wasn't quick enough to decide. It taught me to be more decisive and fast. It's a good lesson for all of us. Don't wait too long, or you might miss the boat for great opportunities. Well said, Eric. And remember, don't miss the boat for learning and trying new things. 
Okay, I hope we have explained Miss the Boat fairly enough. Let's move on to our last word, Eric. The last word today is keep track of something. Keep track of something. Keep track of something. That's a useful phrase. Keep track of something means to make sure you know where something is, or how it is changing over time. It's often used when talking about managing or monitoring things. Let's give some examples, Eric. Certainly. For example, I keep track of my expenses to manage my budget better. Or, he finds it hard to keep track of all the emails he receives at work. It sounds like it helps to be organized. Exactly, Eric. Keeping track of things helps you stay organized and informed. Those were clear examples. Let's look at a dialogue where this phrase is used. Imagine two friends, Tom and Sarah, discussing a school project. Have you been able to keep track of all the assignments we need to finish? I try, but sometimes I miss one or two. How do you keep track of everything? I use a planner. It really helps me organize and keep track of all my tasks. That sounds like a good idea. Maybe I should start using one too. That was a practical use of keep track of something. Now, Eric, how often do you find yourself using this phrase? Quite often especially when dealing with a lot of tasks at work. It's very important. Lisa, do you think keeping track of tasks helps you in your daily life? Absolutely, Eric. It helps me stay organized and efficient. I use apps on my phone to keep track of my appointments and deadlines. Technology can be a great way to keep track of things. It's important for our listeners to find a method that works well for them whether it's digital or traditional. Definitely. Whether you use a notebook or an app, keeping track of your activities can reduce stress and increase your productivity. Eric, any final tips on how to effectively keep track of things? Actually, yes, it does make a big difference to take a few minutes every day to update your planner or list. And remember, it's okay to ask for help if you're struggling to keep track of everything. Great advice. Okay, listeners, that's all for today's words. Thanks for tuning in to Simply Explained English. We hope you found today's episode helpful and easy to understand. Remember, we're here to make English simple for you, one word at a time. Don't forget to subscribe to learn more English words. Join us next time as we explore more useful English phrases. Have a great day and keep learning. Bye-bye.